Hey there, Trish with Upcycle Stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to turn the handle from a fork or a spoon into a necklace. And this is the one that we'll be making today. Um, we'll mostly be working outside. The only thing that you'll need to bring with you is a chain to put your finished pendant on. So let's head out to the workshop and see what tools we're going to need. Okay, we're out in the workshop and these are the items that you're going to need in order to make your no drilling required um, spoon handle or in my case fork handle pendant. So of course you'll need your spoon or your fork with a design on the handle that you like. You'll need your Dremel with a cutoff wheel, the heavy duty cutoff wheel, the tool to change your bits and a grinding stone for um, grinding metal. You'll need a clamp to keep your work in place. Goggles, goggles, goggles. Safety first, girls and guys. And finally, you'll need a, um, oh, I love this tool. It's amazing. So this is a vice grip and you could use needle nose pliers and I have in the past and in fact I've done tutorials on um, using needle nose pliers to make a bale, which is what we need this for. Um, but this vice grip is amazing and does really fabulous things. So um, I highly recommend purchasing this tool if you're going to do any kind of um, continued jewelry making with um, hardened steels like stainless steel and such. And then um, the only thing I don't have here in front of me that you'll probably want to have is a thick piece of fabric like um, corduroy, um, something that's not going to tear easily, like t-shirts not going to work, I've tried that in the past. Um, or you could even use cardboard um, from like an old cereal box, although you don't get such a good grip. But essentially that's just to protect your work when you have the vice grip on there because those teeth can um, nick up the surface. So those are the tools that you're going to need. Um, let's go get started. Alright, I've gone ahead and clamped down our fork. Um, so you want to kind of look at your design and see how far up you want your pendant to go. And the design kind of tapers off here, so I think that's about where I want to start making my bale. And I want to leave probably a good inch or two um, to with which to make that bale. I can always cut more later if I need to, so um, I'm going to go ahead and cut right up here, right up near the top of the fork. So go ahead and grab your Dremel, pop it on high speed, and give that a swift cut across the, the neck part of the fork. This is a really cheap fork. It took hardly anything um, to cut and it uh, it's a pretty good cut. Before we turn over the end to make our bale, we're going to grind down the end of the handle where we cut. Um, it'll be too hard later to get the grinding stone in there. So grab your Dremel with your grinding stone in place, put it on high, and let's grind down the edge until it's smooth. looks good and it's warm to the touch so be careful but when you um, run your finger on it it's nice and smooth and that's how we want that. Okay the last thing that we have to do with this is to turn the um, top side down and towards the back in order to make a bale and then we just have to hang it onto a string and that's it. So we're going to use our handy dandy little vice grip to do that um, and to get started you're going to want to wrap some kind of fabric, heavy fabric. This is t-shirt, but it's four layers of t-shirt on each side. Um, it doesn't, t-shirt typically gets torn up, so if you're going to use it, really double it up, um, or triple or quadruple. So when I cover this, you're not going to be able to see what's happening, so let me explain to you. Um, so you're going to take your vice grip, and you're going to put it at the very top of your piece, and you're going to start to bend, and then you're going to move just slightly, right? So then you're going to move your 
vice grip down just a little bit more and bend some more and you're going to keep doing that and it's ever so slight movements and then um, I'll pull this off and we'll see where we are so let's stop talking and just do it right so here's my handle right here and I'm just going to start bending it backwards just a little bit move it just a little bit and bend it and then move it and bend it and you're trying to bend right by um, right here where the vice grip meets the spoon handle so as your handle starts to curve under you're gonna have to move your vice grip to the side and bend and we're starting to get kind of far down so let's pull this off and see where we are so you can see that you have this little bend starting and now we're going to have to work with this and try to get it bent all the way over. So I'm going to put this back over and I may have to eventually take this off so you can see what I'm doing. Because otherwise it's not going to make any sense to you. So I'm going to come back to the very end of my um, handle and I'm going to just start making a sharper corner. And this is bending a lot more than it was before but the idea is that we have a rounder corner rather than this sort of sharp bend in the metal see how that's starting to take a little bit more shape so you're just going to keep working that until we can get it oops, turned all the way over enough to keep um, a chain from falling out of it So I just totally tweaked that, but we're going to keep playing with it and see what we can do. So I'm actually going to take now, I'm going to show you from the side. This is the end over here. This is the end of my spoon handle, and it curves up this way and comes down here. I'm going to start squeezing those together to form that loop. And the fabric makes that really difficult, but we're going to try anyway. Plus the fact that you can't see what you're doing doesn't help any. Okay, so I'm going to remove some of my fabric in the back so that you can see what I have happening here. See how I have it caught right in that little um, rounded part of the drill of the vice grip? And then I have this up on top. So as I start to squeeze, you'll see it start to close up a little. That's about as far as I can do that. So now I'm going to take this, <laughs> can't see anything, I'm going to have to just wing it and deal with the consequences of the scratch marks. So you're just going to keep moving that so that you can bend more and more of it over. See how nicely that's curving in? Now if I hadn't made such a sharp bend right there, that would be a little bit flatter, so let me try to straighten that out a little. There. Alright, let's see how that's turning out. And see what happens. You get these little nick marks here from the... Um, from the stupid vice grip. I mean, I love the vice grip, don't get me wrong, but. Okay, so that looks um, good to me. If it would have um, stood a little bit straighter if I hadn't got such a sharp bend in there to start with, but it's not bad. I do think I'm gonna add some texture to this, if only to cover up the little nicks that are left behind by the vice grip. So I'm gonna do that simply by using my grinding stone and my Dremel, um, and then we'll take this into the jewelry studio and uh, drop it on a chain and see what the finished product looks like. Okay, so we're back inside in the jewelry studio and I've just about finished up my pendant. So I've taken it and I've run it through some cleaner and I'm actually just using a brass polish that you would use like for your brass, like any kind of um, plates and dishes or whatever that you have made out of brass. Um, for stainless steel, you can use brass polish. You can't use it on sterling silver, so make sure you have special polish for that. In addition, what I did to this piece was, remember I had a, a few nicks up here at the top from my vice grip? Well, I took my grinding stone and I 
sort of sanded out this area that was sort of predefined by the design of the spoon and you can see it has sort of a two-tone effect I think it looks actually pretty nice so um, even though it was just a disguise Nixon I'm glad I did it all right so let's go ahead and add our chain and then we're done so just a word or two on chains really you should be able to just slip it on this ball here won't fit through the hole that I have it's too big but my lobster claw clasp will just barely so if you made your um, your hole too small um, your bail sorry too small then you'll have to get your needle nose pliers out and take your chain apart um, take off one of the findings so that you can fit it through but lucky for me it fit a minute ago <laughs> hold on a second So then just pull that through, and voila, you have a necklace made from an old fork or a spoon, and it could be, you know, something that was special to you. You could have chosen a spoon that was your grandmother's, your great-grandmother's, um, or something that's just been in the family for a really long time. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll um, make lots of them for friends and family.